All right, you have convinced me. I am ready to start this teaching of ESL online. Where do I sign up? Oh, what wonderful news. All I need from you is for you to tell me which company you would like to sign up with. Your options would be VIP Kid, Powfish, GoGo Kid, iTutor Group, Q Kids, Dada, Cambly, GoFluent, Education First, Same Speak, Say ABC, Teach Away, Teach Lingo, Two Sigmas, Voxy, 51 Talk. Oh, the opportunities are endless. Let me just run in the back and get all my papers. I'll be right back. Hello there, friend. Are you overwhelmed by the options? Do you even know where to start? Could you use some steps to get you moving in the right direction? Well, look no further. I'm here to help you. Let's do this. Good morning, Calcus. Brittany Charay here. I am a Christ follower, a wife of five years, a mother to three littles, and a missionary in Guatemala who also teaches ESL online, and I am here to inspire, train, and equip some of you to do the same. Today, I am here to help you choose your platform for teaching ESL online. There are so many platforms. Back in January, when I sat down to choose a platform, I was overwhelmed. After spending hours of researching, I started noticing what things I wanted to look for in each new company to see whether I qualified first and whether it was a good match for what I was wanting. As I proceeded, I was surprised by how many things I needed to take into consideration and it was a lot to sort through. And I found myself going back and forth trying to figure out what might be good options for me. And I do not want you to have to do that. Now, I cannot choose a platform or multiple platforms for you because I do not know your current situation, your skill set, or your preferences. But what I can do is provide you with an organized list of considerations to refer to as you sort through your options. This can help you to narrow down your options tremendously. I have gathered a list of nine considerations for any ESL teaching platform to guide you in choosing the one that best fits you. Let me walk you through these right now in this video, and then at the end, I will refer you to a couple more resources, one of my own and one that I found online that may make this process even more simple and concise for you. I don't want you to become overwhelmed by this information. Don't try to memorize the points. I have a PDF available for you that will summarize the points, but for right now, just listen and absorb my wisdom. Okay, just teasing, but seriously, let me talk you through this so that you follow the reasoning and then you can pop back to the PDF for reference later. Let's jump in and do this. These first four are especially crucial to consider because they are things that you cannot change about your current situation, meaning your answer to these questions could immediately disqualify you from any given platform. Do not see this as discouraging if it is narrowing down your list. In fact, that's the point. Knowing which platforms are not an option for you helps you get down to the ones that are. And I can just about guarantee that there are at least multiple platforms for which you qualify. Disclaimer, while nearly every English speaker qualifies for at least one ESL teaching platform, not every English speaker should necessarily teach. You do not need to be a teacher by profession, but if you do not like people in general, or if your patience level hits an abnormal low, you may not be suited for such a position. Proceeding upon neglect of this warning could result in extreme depression and fatigue upon teaching, and students throwing tomatoes at you from their end of the video call. Please act upon this advice and warning accordingly. All right, with that announcement out of the way, let's hop into this. Consideration number one, are you a native English speaker? If you are, you are good to proceed to the next consideration. If you are not, do not worry. There are options available to you, but they are much more limited. So you want to start by searching specifically for platforms that allow non-native English speakers and working from there. This is probably the most limiting of the categories. 
consideration number two. This is actually twofold and can tie into consideration number one. What is your nationality and current location? Some platforms only accept native English speakers from particular countries or locations because of varying accents or other reasons. Furthermore, some companies will only hire native English speakers that currently live in those qualifying countries. Others require a specific nationality, but you can live anywhere in the world, granted that you have a sufficient internet speed and connection. Consideration number three. Do you have a bachelor's degree? If you do, again, you will qualify for the majority of platforms that you find. Do take note though, whether there are specific degrees required, such as a specialty in teaching English or a degree in education. This could be consideration 3B. If you do not have a bachelor's degree, there are still solutions for you, including the platform that I currently teach on. Again, I just recommend that, like with the first consideration, that you start from here in narrowing down your options. This will immediately weed out the ones that you do not qualify for so that you can find the ones for which you do qualify. Consideration number four. Know the devices, software, and equipment that is required. Some platforms require that classes be taught from a computer or a PC, while other platforms have classes that can or even must be taught from a phone or tablet. It's important to know this upfront so that you know whether it is something that you are already equipped for or ready to invest in. Consideration 4B. If you are like me and are in a part of the world or a part of the country where you do not have high internet speed, you do need to know what your internet speed is and what is required for any platform that you are considering. Many companies require 20 megabytes per second. I discovered that I did not have that and that it is not even available in our current location. So that was a limiting factor that helped me to get to where I am now. So please keep this in mind. Were any of you highly concerned by those red streaks across my chest? I just have very sensitive skin. I was not attacked. I probably did this. Also, do you hear that noise? Obviously you do. My husband has a woodworking business and apparently they're using the noisiest tools today. So, Consideration number five. What are your hours available for teaching? and how does this compare to the possible schedule of the given platform and the time zone of the country you would be teaching in. For clarity, I will give an example of my current situation. So I am a stay-at-home mom of three littles and I was not interested in giving it up. So I wanted a job in which I could teach while they were sleeping. Powfish is a Chinese company, so I looked at the peak hours of teaching with them and I had to compare Beijing time with my time zone and I learned that I am 14 hours behind them. So when they say peak hours are from 5.30 to 9 p.m., that means those same times are 3.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. my time. But I could also see that 10 a.m. Beijing time, which is my 8 p.m., is also a big time for classes and that classes can happen any time throughout their day, which is my night. So keep this in mind as you peruse ESL teaching platforms. Now you need to note that China and many other countries do not implement daylight savings time. So if you live in a country or location that does, take into consideration that your time will be one hour off of the current difference for half of the year. Does that make sense? Consideration number six. Do you want to be creating and teaching your own curriculum or do you want to teach a curriculum that is already in place? I feel that this is fairly self-explanatory, but know what your gifts are and how much time you can dedicate. I discovered that while I may be able to make more money teaching my own curriculum, I wanted to be able to just hop in and out of classes so that I was sure to be being paid for my time. And I wanted to be able to focus on my kiddos outside of teaching hours. But others of you might feel very boxed in by a strict curriculum and want the freedom to teach your own way. Know what your personality is and what you are capable of. 
Consideration number seven. Know whether you want to be booked by students and parents or have your schedule filled by the company. There are advantages and disadvantages to each and different companies have different systems for bookings. Student-based bookings help you gradually get a student base that fits your teaching style and gifts. For example, although it may take time to fill your schedule, a more serious and calm teacher may start to attract older and more focused students, while a silly, energetic teacher may tend to attract more high energy and often younger students. This is not always true, but often. But you know that the students that you have likely love you or else their parents do. The disadvantage is that it may take you much longer to fill your schedule because you have to be noticed and noticed by the type of student that will appreciate your teaching style. Companies that fill your schedule for you can ensure that you are working a more full and consistent schedule, but there is often less matching of teaching and learning styles. Just know what you want or try one and see how it goes if you're just not sure. Consideration number eight. Do you hope to teach one-on-one, -on -one, small groups, or full classes? Know what style your considered platform implements and whether this is a good match for you. Consideration number nine, know the pay system and whether it is acceptable to you. Often you will see a range of pay and it is worth looking into all of the factors involved because the range can vary pretty dramatically. Sometimes base pay is consistent for all teachers, other times it is determined by your qualifications and other factors involved. Sometimes higher pay levels are earned through the amount of time that you work for a company, and other times it is earned monthly through a point system or incentives. So do some research to sort through how the pay scale works if the difference is important to you. I left this as the final consideration because it can be easy to want to start with the highest paying opportunity, but all of these other considerations are of equal or greater importance to help you find a job that is sustainable for you. All right, look at me. Do you feel overwhelmed? Please don't be. You don't have to have it all figured out, but using this and a couple of other resources that I have for you, you can quickly narrow down your options to find a place to start. I mentioned at the beginning that I have a PDF for you. I created a small PDF packet that has three parts. First, there is a simple mindset exercise to help you think through what exactly you want and are willing to work for. Second, there is a list of the nine considerations that I just explained to you with the key points listed. Third, there is a simple checklist for getting started with any online ESL company. So if you are interested in that, you can grab that PDF from the link in the description below. You can print it out if you are a pen and paper kind of guy or gal, or you can fill it out right here on your device. The goal is to walk you through those difficult first steps to get you moving in the right direction. The first steps are always the hardest, so I wanna help you get through them. The other resource that I mentioned is one that I stumbled across online. It is a chart that breaks down many of these factors mentioned in this video for dozens of ESL teaching platforms in a brief way that's easy to digest. You can skim this chart and find some possible platforms for your situation. Don't stress about finding the platform for you. Just find a few that could work and go with it. Indecision will stop your progress, and I may or may not know this from experience. I encourage you to grab this PDF as well if you are unsure where to start. And if you are struggling with decision fatigue and you just want me to tell you what to do and help you get started, you can always just use my link and code in the description box below to apply for Palfish. With Palfish, you can teach from anywhere in the world as long as you are a native English speaker and you have a consistent internet connection. No degree or teaching experience is required. All right, are you okay? You've got this? It feels like a lot now, but I told you, I'm trying to walk you through the hardest part, which is taking the first steps. I can't wait to have you join me. Whether you are curious, interested, but hesitant, ready to jump in, or you're already in, but you're ready to grow. If you have found this video helpful, would you give this video a like and go ahead and subscribe? 
I plan to continue pumping out videos once a week to inspire, train, and equip potential and current online ESL teachers. And for those who are interested, next week I will be back to explain why just about anyone can be a teacher, including you. Until then. Oh, oh, don't forget to grab my packet of beginnings. Grab it. Just, just grab it below in the description box, right? Yes. No, over, over there. Ah, yes. You got it. All right. See you next week. Oh, oh, did you subscribe? How will you remember to come back next week if you didn't subscribe? You'll forget me for sure. <laughs> oh, oh, you did subscribe. <laughs> Good, that's great. Allergies. All right, bye. See you next week. Okay, bye.